Welcome back, everyone. I was going to say, uh, me and Connie just got you finishing two and a quarter acres of uh, fencing and and the process of doing so, driving in the posts and all. And you maybe saw a video on how we do that. Um, notice the scraping noise coming from this wheel area right here. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the vehicle and see if I can figure out if it's a broken brake spring or just what it is. Don't particularly like the sound of that. Not sure exactly what it is. But it's kind of tight too. I have to remove the axle. These are 5 8 by the way. I think they're on it about, well I'm not sure, but uh, 50 at least, I believe, foot-pounds. Okay, the axle is out. I just need to uh, position these tabs that are pushed against. Uh, there's one here and there's one down here. Uh, this uh, lock nut, push them back out of the way, take the lock nut loose, pull the tab thing out, and get to the other lock nut that holds the inner bearing. I pulled the hub off and I had to back the, uh, well, tried to back the uh, tensioner off, the brake pads, but that didn't work. It just started loosening up and come right off. I just sort of twisted the hub off. But anyway, that spring came with the hub. Parts fell out on the ground. That spring right there, that's broken. So when it was making noise and scraping, yep, that was probably because it has kind of, you know, it's not grooved really bad. It really isn't. This is not bad. It looks worse than it is. That's a broken spring right there. I'm going to clean this axle up just a little bit before uh, I put it back in. There you go, axle's clean. Now it's time to clean the uh, the hub. Okay, I'd say that looks a whole bunch better. I just used the little Harbor Freight pry bar as a scraping tool, probably with a wire brush on a drill would have done better but uh, I didn't have to hurry so this is good enough it'll help the drum cool a whole bunch more now too getting that grease off of there okay now it's time to change the seal now this seal serves two purposes one is to seal the axle fluid away from the the brakes and all and hold it into the axle and the other purpose is believe it or not to keep the bearing, his inner bearing, in. Probably the easiest way to do this, to get it out, is to drive the bearing out rather than use a screwdriver to pry the seal off with. Now, if you've got a brass drift, which I misplaced mine just when I needed it the most, but years ago I used to just use a socket, I mean a ratchet extension, and I would change the race and the bearing in the whole nine yards, but I think if I hit it pretty lightly I won't screw the bearing up. Well, I tried tapping on it, but it looks like I'm going to have to hit it harder than I wanted to. And if I bend anything in on the bearing, uh, I'm going to be really disappointed. I do not want to order another bearing for this. 
Not right now, so I'm going to have to do this the hard way and see if I can get under the lip of this seal. But like I said, if you are changing the bearing and the race in the whole nine yards, you can just whack it out from the back side there and you will be fine. But I'm going to do this the hard way, it looks like. Okay, I was able to get under the edge a little bit with a long screwdriver and I'm just sort of working my way around a little bit. Try and get that lip up some. Using a bigger pry bar. And I'm just hitting it on the handle and of the pry bar and seal thinks it wants to come out. And there's the seal. Wow. You can see where I had come around with the bar or the screwdriver. But anyway, there's the seal and I will say that it still feels, it still feels and it still looks good. I probably could have left it in. There's the bearing. Anyway, the edge of the seal fits down inside this area here. And uh, I think while I have this off, the um, repair manual I have says to put a little grease in it, the bearing, just to facilitate it when it first gets started. After that, the uh, 90 weight gear oil will take over. So I'm going to put a little grease in here. Then I'm going to put a new seal down on top. Now I did measure these, so let's see how close I am. I'm going to use a socket to position it in there. An old socket. <laughs> a lot of times this is not going to work. The best way to do this is with one big socket. This is the socket I use to take the spindle nut off with. I mean the uh, shaft nut. And I believe I'm there pretty much. Okay, I think I'm there. I quit beating on that lip. That is in there. Now it's time to put the brake pieces and parts back together that broken and fell out and see how that goes. Okay, I need to get this off of here so I can get started on the old brakes shoe. Um, this is what I have to work with as a picture for anybody that's interested. A lot of the springs are still in place. You can see that some of them are broken, but at least it is I can see where they go. Okay. I want to look under this cap here and see if it's leaking. Couldn't see that real well. Oh yeah. 
Now that's not good. So since that cup is leaking on the inside, I am going to have to replace the cylinder. And I have one right here. There's the part number if you want it. So there's a half inch here, half inch bolt here, half inch bolt here. Take those loose, but first you break this brake line loose, which is 7 16 It's a line wrench, but you might have to use a pair of vice grips because a lot of times these are stripped. It's just hard to get in here with a, with a wrench because of the working room. So I'm going to take all this loose and then I will pull the brake wheel cylinder out from the front of uh, the brake shoes. Okay, when I break this line loose, I'm losing brake fluid and I will have to bleed the brakes when I put the new cylinder in, plus clean up the back side of this uh, wheel hub. With everything loose from the back side now, I should be able to loosen this up and weasel it out. Okay, and there's a better look at it. Now the new one just goes right in that hole, but I think I'll clean it up a little bit for I, the hole before I put the new one in. The new one comes with plugs and caps, which is kind of nice to keep the dirt out while you get it mounted. Okay, I have the pins in place again, cleaned them up a little bit. If I'd have had some silicone, I'd have put a little on it, but I couldn't seem to find that. Put a little light lubricating oil on these, they go in a lot easier. Now what you want to do is uh, position this brake line. It'll position itself somewhat, but you want to start these threads by hand. So you definitely want this started by hand because you do not want to cross you do not want to cross thread these. Here's a helpful hint. If you leave the cylinder a little loose, not tighten it up, it makes this easier to start. Your brake line will start easier if you leave your cylinder loose. It gives you a little movement to start the line by hand. Okay, the cylinder is mounted, and now I want to push this pin in this way and, and line it up with this shoe. And uh, it'll be centered, and that side should be okay. Okay, so three, three rub points with the brake shoe on the left side would be here, here, and here. And over here on this shoe here, I have one down here. Here I pulled the shoe back against the drum. And I don't think I can get to the one up here on top. But if I can get these two down here, I'll be happy. Well, I can see that I need a new spring down here. And I just happen to have a bunch of springs. And this would be one right here, so. That would go in like that, I do believe. And that little spring there looks all right. Uh, there's a broken spring here. Here in the back is a that's a spring hold down of a sort. I thought it was broken. Here's what the new ones look like. Since it's loose, maybe I'll go ahead and replace it. It's my understanding if you got an eighth of an inch depth before you hit a rivet, then your shoe's okay as far as wear goes. If you don't have rivets, you would measure from the edge of the metal 
to the shoe. Anyway, an eighth of an inch seems to be the uh, standard for me in my book, anyway. And I found my silicone paste and I put a little here and here and over and here. Removed a couple of the springs that were there to... I guess I could have taken this one out, but there. Now, this could be interesting. The problem with brake shoes is you need three arms or three hands most of the time to get these things to properly fit where you can mount them up. But I have a plan. I've positioned a clamp holding the uh, shoe to the drum or the plate and it's all pushed in and everything. Now all I gotta do is hook this spring up to this little arm here coming out and there's only like a half an inch to go but it might as well be a mile because this spring is really strong so that's what I'm going to fool with right now jeez louise like that So what I'm going to do is try and pull the screwdriver over this way and keep it behind the brake plate. Excuse me, keep it behind the brake shoe. And then attempt to hook this behind like that. But that is not, I don't think that's a happy camper right there because I can't get it in there. Boo! Well, sometimes it slips off and it actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and put this top spring in up here and uh, using my brake tool. Um, and a pair of pliers. Each little bit you do helps position the shoes more into their respective places. So I had to use the new adjuster. And then I put white lithium grease. White lithium grease has metal to metal contact. Go ahead and back this all the way down see if I can give myself a little more working room which I probably can and then drop it on the good thing I got something underneath there now I'll we'll be putting it in the dirt and I've done that once already anyway there we go okay Trying to remember that clockwise is tightened and counterclockwise is loosened when I'm behind it. Near as I can tell, the only other spring I need to replace now is the one that goes across here. It goes in right here. Come on, get in there. Okay. And goes behind all of this. Okay, this spring right here goes behind all these mechanisms and it goes into a hole right down here. There's two holes. Actually, it goes into the bottom one right down here. Just a little, a little grease in those holes just in case that spring wants to rub itself through. That'll help maybe prolong its life. Okay, I've got my tool positioned down there. I don't know if I can stay off of the self-adjuster. I might be able to pull that spring down to a hole that I can almost see. There we go. And just push it in there. There we go. All right. I have all the springs in. 
that were broken, everything seems to be holding. Well, everything looks to be in its place and uh, solid, but what I like to do to make sure is tap it because they are supposed to move like that. Yep, self adjuster's catching just fine. So now I believe it's time to put the hub back on. So I put a little silicone paste around this seal here to help make it slide in a little easier. I also added a little white grease on some more of the friction points that I could think of in here. It's not necessary. I want to make sure this little bearing race in here, this outer one, is good, clean, and smooth. I uh, didn't check the inner one, but I believe it's fine. So now I'm ready to put the hub wheel brake back on. Of course the inside of the drum is clean. Okay. I'm going to put a little light oil on the threads here. Okay, now that I've got the hub positioned on there fairly well, let me get this out of there before I forget about it. And I'm going to put the outer bearing in, and I'm just going to put a little light grease on it. Uh, book says to pack it, but I believe that a little bit of grease will work fine until the uh, 90 weight gets up in here. So. Push it up in there good. This is the uh, inner lock nut. It is beveled. Flat side on this side. Oops, excuse me, the bevel side on this side. And the flat side here. You can see it goes up against the, uh, the bearing. So this pushes it. Holds both of them in. This is the first nut. You can almost see which side has to go on. There, I don't know why I was having so much trouble. I had a hair in there, I guess. Because it spins on fairly quickly and fairly easily. Two and nine sixteenths socket fits this nut. Manual says to put it on at fifty to eighty foot pounds. Back off one or back off three eighths of a turn. I set my torque wrench for sixty. Let's see what happens. You want this drum to spin freely. Okay. Now you back off three eighths of a turn. Which is almost a half. This would be right about there in my opinion. And you check the drum. Make sure it spins freely. You check for end play and I cannot feel any end play in this at all. Now if you get them too tight, which I don't think they are, you will burn them out, the bearings I'm talking about. Anyway, that looks fine to me, feels good. Um, when I backed it off on the torque wrench, you could feel this nut really loosen up, so it tells me that 
there's really not a lot of pressure pushing in on this. And if the bearings are good, otherwise you'd probably have a little wobble or something in it. And now what I need to do is put this locking ring back on. Now this locking ring, this locking ring, some of these tabs are designed to go in that way and some are coming this way. So you want to hold the nut that's in there. You want to lock it and it's keyed. There's a keyway right here. You want to lock the nut that's in there and you want to lock the next nut that you're putting on. This is the final one. And generally you can tell by the the wear on there. You can see that it's shiny on here so it means this heart was actually pushing against uh, something. And Go ahead and start it. And I believe this one is 90 to 100 foot pounds. And there's, uh, I don't believe there's any backing off on this one. This is just to lock everything into place. So I'm going to set my torque wrench at 90 foot pounds. Sure don't take much. Check the drum again. She's fine. I want to get down here and push these uh, the tabs and lock them in. It doesn't take too much to bend these tabs in. I got a little punch here. Just got to bend them in a little ways. I started them with a screwdriver a little bit, but punch does real well for pushing them back that way. Now I want to bend some one or two or two of them at least this way. Okay, I was able to get once again my little Harbor Freight tool. That might do something. Here's another one. I can get probably down here. All right. Now I need to put the axle in. I'm going to put a little light oil again on the, some of the threads here. I'm pretty sure there's oil in the uh, differential already. This is a floating axle. And if you didn't know, you could actually pull this axle with the tire left on the vehicle. Since you didn't see me taking it out, you can watch me put it back in. And there you have it. Now I just have to put these bolts back in. I believe they're 50 foot pounds. I forgot to mention there is a metal gasket behind here. And uh, I had lined it up previously with the holes. I used a little dab of silicone to hold it in place. These bolts are 40 to 50 foot pounds. And they are 5 8 bolts that go in here. Takes a little finesse to get them started. Get a couple of them in, the rest should line up fairly easily. I 
I did put a little light oil on the threads to make them go in easier. Once I get them all started by hand, I can run them down with the wrench. Okay, now 40 to 50 foot-pounds with the torque wrench. I split the difference, made it 45. Okay, 45 foot-pounds, and I might actually have to see if the parking brake works. All right, I put the parking brake on. Not all the way. <laughs> I'm going to have to put it on harder. These shoes are not adjusted yet and the brakes need to be bled so this 45 foot pounds there's one two three four five six Seven, and eight. Now I just go around and check them all again. I don't know, did I miss one? <laughs> all right, put the wheel on. Here's the way I like to put on tires, whether they're big tires or small car tires. I take a, usually my tire tool and I roll the wheel over it so it lines up like that and then I use it as a pry bar and I lift up and put it on the rim. Usually I line the holes or the, the uh, studs up first. And there you have it go around underneath now and tighten the uh, adjuster, self-adjuster. Okay, I want to reach in here and get that wheel. And clockwise, I believe, would be going this way. If the wheel's this way, clockwise would be looking like that. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit at a time. Okay, that's, uh, that's plenty dragged for me right now. Uh, so if your brake springs kit came with rubber plugs, go ahead and put those in if you don't have them on your wheels already because it helps keep the water out and dirt and dust. Okie doke, that one looks very nice. Okay, this is the right side rear and the little, the little dust cover. Ain't much left of it, but this is a 10 millimeter, and what I want to do is break it loose, and then what I do is I, uh, I use the old jar and tube method. I have a jar with a little brake fluid in the bottom of it, clean fluid. And it's a little, it's like a, uh, a hose that's just the right size to fit over the end of this. Okay, this is a 10 millimeter. I'm using a socket to break it loose because the wrench is hard to get in there. Okay, breaks loose a lot easier. Then what I will do is I will use the wrench to loosen and tighten it. So the process is, is to take the hose, the other end of the hose that is, one end is in your jar in fluid, and then this is the other end of the hose, and you put it over the fitting hose right there. Makes good contact over that fitting. Have someone pump the brakes. What you want to look for is bubbles in this jar as they pump the brakes. Now by the hose being at the bottom of the fluid it, it can't suck any air back up into the line so have your bleeder tight at the top, 
pump up the brakes, have them hold them to the floor, and then loosen the bleeder and look for bubbles. Close the bleeder off. Pump up the brakes, hold them to the floor, open the bleeder, look for bubbles. And as soon as you see no bubbles coming out, you make sure that this is tight, you're done with this side. Okay, she's got them pumped up and hold to the floor. I'm going to loosen this valve at the top. And we'll look for bubbles down here. Okay, now I'm tightening the valve back up. Pump them. Okay. And I'll loosen this valve again and we'll look for bubbles. Here we go. Tighten the valve back up. Another thing you need to do is check your reservoir under the hood and make sure you fill it up with fluid because as you're letting the fluid out the reservoir is going low and you don't want to run it completely out of fluid. Okay, pump them up. Loosen the fitting. Okay, I think this one's done. Tighten the fitting up good. And time to move on to the next side and put more brake fluid in the reservoir. Okay, same procedure. This is the left side, the next wheel, driver's rear. And take the rubber cap off. Dust cover. And I'm going to break it loose with the socket wrench. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and attach my hose to this fitting here. Okay, pump them up. Okay, let's see if we get any air in this. Oh, not a lot. Okay, pump them up. Okay, I don't think we're getting any air out of this one at all. How are they feeling? Good. You're not moving a lot. Not moving very much? Okay, I'm going to check the fluid reservoir. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not bad at all. I'm going to go ahead and fill the front one up here. This is the one that's been going low all the time I'm doing the backs. I believe the other reservoir here is probably for the front discs. Okay, I cleaned the cylinder up on the side of here a little bit where it spilled some fluid. It is raised up a few inches on the left side and fluid may actually be going this way. Not quite that bad, but take that into consideration. I don't expect anything to run out. Oh yeah, it's still some in there. Look, I can feel it right there. God, it doesn't look bad at all. I believe this takes five or six pints, what I would do. If I can evacuate the fluid, I will wait till it just runs out the hole. So I'm using my handy dandy little fluid pump 90 weight gear oil I will also use this same system to uh, 
put the fluid in. But this is the type of axle that does not have a, uh, a drain plug. I kind of wish it did. Yep, I was afraid that was going to happen. Good thing I put a clothespin on it. I'm going to try and also use a little rag in there. Maybe help hold it better. I am getting air. Two pints to a quart. So I've got four pints, maybe a little more in here. This rear end is either a five or six pint rear end. So, and I think it was a little low. Now I need to add some new 90 weight. Okay, I've got five pints in it, but I don't know where it is up here. Well, it's running out up here, so now I know where it is. So, we're good. I'm just going to let it run out a little bit. Okay, that's probably good. Probably be fine. But I do know that it's above the level where it was before I drained it. Okay, that's good and tight. Now it's good and dry. Well, there you have it. Quite a bunch of repairs for this video. Thank you all for watching, staying with it this far. And I uh, want to thank you all for subscribing. And hope these repairs uh, will give you a little insight into some repair work you might be doing on your truck. So until the next video, this is Cars, Trucks, and this is Cars, Trucks, and Detours, a.k.a. Steve AZ711, saying bye for now.